So hi, thank you for coming. Uh, I feel a little bit overwhelmed about uh, talking on Pyreira. I'm just a software engineer. I'm also studying mathematics now, but uh, this is intended to be just an introduction. It's not too much related to Python. It's just to present you a tool that probably is useful in, in some use cases. So here is my Twitter handle. If you want to follow me, also uh, you can ask for my email if you have any question. So let's start. Um, let's start by the beginning. Uh, graphs have been around since, I think, 18th century. Thanks to this mathematician that probably most of you will know is Euler. Um, and people from that time has time to think about uh, many full things. They don't have Twitter to lose the time. So he asks himself this, this question. Uh, he lived in Konigsberg, that it was a city in, in Prussia. Um, the question was, can you t take a walk through town visiting each part of the town and crossing each bridge only once? Well, the answer is no, but this is not the interesting thing, the interesting thing about uh, this, this problem. This problem was the, the start of uh, graph theory. So we have a um, mathematical tool to build this kind of, of problems. And what is a graph? Uh, this is the mathematical definition that uh, basically is a pair of sets of vertices and edges that connect those vertices. Well, this is a formal definition, but we are very used to, to graph. Uh, here, for example, we have a graph that is basically a, a tube uh, map. Uh, we have the nodes are the stations. The connection between the stations are the relationships. Uh, those relationships have some kind of, of properties that can be the time that takes to go from one node to another, uh, distance, and so on. So let's start. What is a graph database? A graph database basically is an engine that uses a graph as a main data structure. And which kind of graph we are interested in? There are many kind of, of graphs. But uh, on almost all the graph databases implement the property graph that basically stores nodes and relationships. Those relationships connect the nodes, and both can have properties that in a programming mean is a pair of key value. OK? So, and today I'm going to present uh, Neo4j, the, that is the, the one that I'm used to, to work with. It's written in Java, it's a bit, uh, 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 it provides ACID, uh, so we can have uh, a consistent data, and it provides a REST interface, so we can interact with many languages, and also it provides a declarative language called Cypher that we'll say, see in detail later on. But uh, probably, well, at least me, we, I'm used to, I was used to work with relational database, work more or less good for some use cases, but why? Well, probably the most important thing is if we are working with uh, highly connected data, the approach of relational database is a bit artificial. We have to deal with uh, intermediate tables that hold metadata, for example, how data is connected. Uh, so this, in my opinion, is a bit artificial, and relational databases are not meant to work in that way. So sometimes we can face to some scalability problems. And I would like to show you a query plan. Well, for that, given a table of friends, give me the friends of my friends. Wow, this doesn't scale. If we go deeper, this is crazy. And we don't have a good performance to get real time queries. OK? So one of the main problems that we face uh, with relational database on highly connected environments, data that is highly connected that we need to explode this, this kind of connectivity, doesn't scale on relational databases. So that's where graph databases are meant to work better than relational uh, databases. Here, for example, we have an experiment that some uh, book authors run. And basically, what they do is uh, look friends of friends in different depths. So here we have the table with the times. 
in the first level is more or less the same in both uh, databases. Uh, if we go deeper, MySQL starts to doesn't work quite very well, so it's not. Uh, we cannot get real-time responses. Of course, we can run in batch during night and get the results, but if we are running some applications in, in real time, let's say, for example, we want to build a recommendation system that is responsive to the, to for the users, this doesn't work well for, for the, this use case. That's, why is there, what's the reason about that? As I told you before, in relational databases, we have to build these intermediate tables. We have to handle this manually, do joins and all the work that is not they are not meant to, to do that, that work when they were designed. And what's the difference between a relational database and a graph database? Given the model, accessing, for example, given one row, give me all the friend IDs, the complexity of this. In the best case, if we have an index on this table, is all of n. On a graph database, given the model that we can access directly to the neighborhood, the complexity is, is constant. Okay, if we go deeper, the complexity of our relational database to get friends of friends is m, m, where m is the depth, and log of n. And in a graph database, the complexity is uh, o of, of m, where m is the, the depth. And also, another reason that is more philosophical, more in the software engineer way than, than in data, is that we can model our data domain more natural, in a natural way. If we look at, at this example that is on some kind of UML diagram, we have some entities that can be nodes. They, they have relationship between each other that have relationship on, on the graph database domain, and this relationship has some meaning. So, yeah, that can be... Uh, we can transform this domain to a graph database directly while, while if we are using a relational database, we have to do more work to, to transform these relationships to a relational model. What are the use cases for graph databases? There is no silver bullet in technology or in anything in life, so relational databases are great for some use cases, graph databases are good for, for others. The most common example that we can think when we are thinking about graphs is the classical social network example where people follow each other. This is Twitter model, for example. Some people follow each other, so users are the nodes and relationships are the, the meaning of following each other. But there are other interesting problems, the classic geospatial problems uh, where we can find sorted paths, uh, interesting uh, applications on fraud detection, uh, if we have a very complex authorization model, we can model as a graph. Because we can think, for example, in a huge organization where some people can access some documents, depending if you uh, belong to some group or not. We can do that in real time. It's in graph databases in the past. This kind of model were running batch during night, so we can update our authorization model in real time. Also for network management, let's imagine we have we run some uh, platform as a service and we have clients. We can say, okay, given this platform, what happens if some server fails? Which clients will be affected for, for this uh, fail? And there is much more use cases. And also this, uh, this one that is build recommendation systems on, on real time, okay? And uh, now I'd like to introduce you Cypher, that is the declarative language that is given by Neo4j. Uh, it's ASCII-oriented. With ASCII-oriented, I mean that we withdraw in some way. We'll say later how we can draw the patterns we are looking for. And with pattern matching, I don't mean pattern matching like in functional programming. I mean like we, it's a declarative language, so we say to the engine, what are we looking for, no? How? They ha the engine has to look for. Uh, here we have the different uh, layers of the architecture. And on the top, and most abstract way, we have Cypher, that is this language I was talking to you about. Then we have the Transversal API that is only accessible uh, via JVM because 
Uh, this is a, a database uh, built in JVM. Then we have the core API and finally the kernel that we are not meant to access. So if we want to, to write some code that uses the transversal API, it should be done in some JVM language. And let's start with some examples. Uh, this is the most simple example that we can represent on, on Neo4j using Cypher. That basically is, uh, I have two nodes and they are related. So uh, this is the drawing up and below we have the Cypher representation. This is what I meant to, do, to, to tell you when I, I told you that it's actually oriented. We draw more or less what, what we want to represent. Then we have, uh, for example, here uh, two nodes. One is Clapton and it's related to Cream with, the, with a label that he play in Cream. Uh, here we have the example I told you before about the social networks. Uh, we can also label nodes. In this case, I'm telling, okay, John is a user that follows Jeff, that is a user. This is good for performance because we can filter nodes by, by type. Uh, we can also add properties both on nodes and in relationship. Here I'm saying Clapton, node Clapton that has a property name, Eric Clapton, play in in some date, uh, 1968 in Cream. And Cream is also labeled as blues. Okay, and the representation we have below the representation. Pretty st straightforward forward to represent data. And this is the most simple way of, of querying. Uh, with this query, what I'm telling to Neo4j is, okay, give me all the nodes that are connected in the, the direction M to B uh, with a label, and give me all of them. And it will return all the nodes that are connected. Also, I can look for patterns. Okay, give me all the nodes that are connected M to B with a label play in, and also this uh, I want to know the label. Do you remember this pattern? Well, I'm looking for all, all of these kind of relationships. And re give me some properties, okay, of the, the given nodes. Also, I can filter by some properties on the nodes. Let's notice that we have to, to activate the indexes. If not, this will be too costly. But again, give me all the bands that in which Eric Clapton plays and the label. Uh, I'm giving here a, a starting node to the engine to traverse the graph and give me this pattern. Uh, I can define a start node and end, end node. So here what I'm telling to the engine is uh, give me all the bands labeled as blues that Eric Clapton played and order it by, by date. And also I can have a optional uh, relationship. Uh, here I'm telling uh, note Clapton can be connected to B also in play-in or produce. We, we can have a different uh, relationship that connects uh, nodes. Also we can filter out our data like we can do in, in SQL. It's, it's very similar, some, some of the syntax. Uh, here, for example, I'm telling to the engine, okay, given this pattern, return me only the, the relationship that has, has a property uh, higher than this, this date. Also, we can have a, um, optional depth. Here, I'm telling to the engine, okay, give me all the nodes that are connected at maximum depth of five. Uh, here we have a classic example. Uh, let's imagine that we are in Madrid and we can we can want to go one, from one point to another. So I select a start and end. Okay. I look for all the relationships, all the paths. I get the the total weight, and I get the the shortest one. Uh, now for they has all the graph algorithms that we know implemented. This is only as a didactical example. And I don't know if I have enough time, but I'll try to show you how to build a very, very simple recommendation system. Not anything fancy, just to show how can we 
uh, use Neo4j for this kind of work. It's not anything related with machine learning, just some naive example. So let's imagine we work in some social network, another one that is related with movies, some kind of Netflix or so on, that we can show movies and rate it and so on. And our boss tell us, okay, build a recommendation system based on what your, what your friends uh, rate and so on. And this social network will have users that rate movies, people that act or direct movies, and users that follow each other. And this is how do we model it. I'll do it in this way. A user can follow other user. User rate with some stars one film, and director or actor act or direct on, on films. Uh, the first approach can be, okay, the last film that I saw was Pulp Fiction, so I look for me. And for the last uh, movie I watched, in this case, uh, Fran and the, the movie. And I'm looking for other films that other users that also rate uh, Pulp Fiction, they rate also. And return all these, these uh, movies. It's a very, very nice approach, but I'll have some movies to see, but I don't want to see also the movies that has rate of one, so we can improve more. Well, this is how we can see graphically. I'm looking for the other films that other users that also rate Pulp Fiction uh, rate, but this is very nice approach, so I'll filter telling to the engine, okay, give me at least the films with the same rating that I did to Pulp Fiction can be. But probably someone told that uh, some crappy movies, five star. So I'll try to look for what my friends also like. So what I do is, okay, I add another conditions to the connection. Give me also the films that only people that I follow or they followed me, uh, they rate too. So here we have the graphical representation on, on how do we, how the results are. Okay, I rate Pulp Fiction. The user that I follow also rate Pulp Fiction. So the final result is the film that he also rate. Uh, we can do things like give me all the films that Tarantino also direct and, and act, very straightforward. Tarantino direct a movie and also acting. Uh, this is the model. But now we should be able to categorize also films. So the way I, I do this using a graph database will be like this. Uh, genre can be subdivided in some subgenres. So this is like a hierarchical relationship. And now we will filter also by the same, at least some subgenre of the film that I try, I rate and I want to get a recommendation. So this is the same query that before, but I'm adding another, another condition to, to this uh, query is, okay, give me another film that at least belongs to the same genre, a maximum of depth three, uh, that the, the last one that I saw, that is Pulp Fiction. So now we are getting more likely to like Films, not so fancy algorithm, but can work. Uh, as I told you before, Neo4j runs in JVM, so we can write uh, extensions and expose it uh, on on a REST level. So, if we find that some some query is slow, we can write directly on on Java or any JVM language and expose through the API. So we minimize the data that is interchanged. Some examples is Java, don't look at it. <laughs> uh, there is drivers for, for mostly all of, of, of the languages. I can show you how it looks the Python Neo, that is the one that I use for work with, uh, with uh, Python and Neo4j. I don't have time, so uh, 
some references. If you want to use Snail4j as a service and don't install in, in your computer, you can use this service for free. Do you have questions? Thank you, Francisco. Questions? A question. Um, is there any reason why certain properties like genre, for example, are represented as other nodes with relation to movies as opposed to properties on the, on the node itself? Depend on how do you want to uh, exploit this data. If you want to have, for example, a hierarchy of uh, genres, it's better to have these kind of nodes. Also, it's more performant because uh, looking into properties uh, it's not so cheap on, on Neo4j. Um, well, that's the reason. Uh, even with indexes and properties, it's... Uh, yeah. Okay. Thank you. And also you have uh, to duplicate the data all the time. Uh, it's uh, less space having just a relationship that key value all the time in all the nodes. Regarding this, uh, isn't there a super node problem in Neo4j? What? So yeah, a super node problem. Usually in graph databases, you have, if you have super nodes, so nodes connected to too many nodes, mm -hmm. uh, they, they, well, in many data graph databases, this is a problem. Yeah, you can have problems because you have too many paths to, but you can cut on the query, I want only depth of maximum five. But yeah, you can have problems if you have one million relationship from the same node. Yeah. Yeah. Other questions? Hi, can you go back to the slide with the genre and subgenre relation? Okay. Um, how do you how do you find the films we have some some particular genre? You can, here instead of looking for a generic okay. genre, you oh. can use the, you have to put a property on, on the genre, okay? Okay, so you uh, can... Name drama, for example. Okay, so if some, some genre is of the same, is of some subgenre is of the same genre, then you can, or you can also know all, uh, all the subgenre. Also, okay, yeah. fit this with this relation. This okay. is, for example, here is what I'm doing. I'm telling to the engine belongs to. Oh, belongs okay. to okay. mostly three grades of subgenre. Ah, okay. Now I understand. Okay, thank you. Other questions? No one. Okay, thank you again. I would like to say that uh, this summer we are organizing Neuropython in Bilbao, in Spain. Uh, included on the same ticket will be a PyData conference, so I would like to see you over there. And thank you. <laughs>